on this episode, we got shut down. I'll go into selfie mode until she gets here. Um, what up, Animal? What up, Tucker? Good to see Tom. Looks like, oh, there's India. Let's see, let's track India. Let's track India's walk to doing the show. There she is in the mix in New York City. There she is. <laughs> here she comes. There she is. Hi, India. Hi. You're on Facebook Live. Yay. <laughs> All right. How you doing? Good. You ready to go? Yeah. This is Rockefeller Center, right? Yes. <laughs> this is actually really cool. So cool. Ready? Uh, yes. Do you want to do anything kind of like cool or? No. Wow. Nice shoes. Very white. 169? 169. Hey everybody, this is Gary Vaynerchuk and this is episode 169 of the Ask Gary V Show. This really works out nicely. We are at Rockefeller Center. It's pretty, D-Rock. Did you show the skating ring? It's really nice. It's really nice. And uh, feels very festive this time of year. Good to be here, a beautiful Friday morning in New York. Uh, I don't know, I can't debate global warming uh, because I'm just not educated uh, in any shape or form on the issue, but man, it's nice to be nice and warm in December and not wear a coat. Uh, and I'm excited, huge Jets, Giants game. I actually decided in the shower this morning that I don't want to predict it. I really don't. I just don't have that feel anymore. I'm sorry, I know so many people want the prediction. I will make one prediction. Odell Beckham may literally break all-time NFL records. No Revis, no Marcus Williams. We're on our third corner. It's gonna get ugly out there. I see the Giants putting up a lot of passing yards. I'm very concerned, India. Very concerned. Get in here. Are you scared? You're worried? That, do you feel like a cop's gonna arrest you? Or? Oh, I don't wanna mess up D-Rock's shot. You know? Oh, D-Rock's shot, got it. All right, it's good to see you, India. Good to see you, too. All right, let's do this. Helena asks, any advice for people working 7 p.m. to 2 a.m. doing what they love but aren't sure how to monetize it, such as a blog? Helena? Yeah. You know, Helena, I think, um, I, you know, I think it's dangerous not to have a concept of how you're gonna monetize uh, if you want money as a KPI, meaning I need everybody to understand there's a difference between strategy and patience. You need to be patient to execute your strategy, but you need a strategy. Like, you know, and, and by the way, strategy is very easy. If you're building a personal brand or if you're talking about coffee or things of that nature, whatever you're doing, there's a lot of ways to sell. You sell as being a personality. You show up at events and get paid for that. You, you, you make a book and you sell that. Uh, you know, you create a product like a, a coffee maker and you sell that. There's not a lot of different ways to monetize and make money. You make it through advertising. You make it through appearance fees. You make it through selling stuff. It, you know, it's quite basic. So. I've saved you time on your strategy. That's how you're gonna monetize. You're either gonna, you're gonna siphon the leverage into a product, a service, or your time. That's it. That's your strategy. I've told you. You now know how you're gonna do it. Now, what you really need to worry about is, does anybody give a crap about what you're doing between seven and two? You know, and you can't just talk about loving knitting or loving sneakers, but nobody thinks you're good at it. You know, there's a little bit of a meritocracy in this. The market has to care, and if the market doesn't care, you lose. Daniel asks, I'm starting a fatherhood blog. How would you market it? I would go to Instagram and use every and search every hashtag that you can think of around fatherhood, starting with fatherhood. As my well, stun one, let's put you to work. Can you quickly check how many people have used the fatherhood uh, hashtag on Instagram? I would go to Twitter search and I would go to Instagram search and I would search the fatherhood uh, hashtag. I would then look at the content and I would engage with it. Uh, I would do that under the name of your blog, not as Rick. Uh, 464,000 posts. 
464,000. Yeah. So there's 464,000 pieces of content on Instagram that you can engage with in a jab way. Under an account you create for the fatherhood blog, you go look at the piece of content, you look at what the dad or the mom of the dad and the kid wrote, and you engage with it. Like, that's cute. I'm, like, I would go look at one, I'd see a, a dad holding a Patriots, a little Patriot baby, because it's a Patriot bit, and I would jump in and be like, boo Patriots, you suck, my cute kid. You know, like, be real, jab, don't be like, come to my blog, it's really good, you want to learn more about fatherhood, come to my, no, that's spam. Engage in the community, work 15 hours a day, grind, 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 that is the easiest and hardest way to do it. The other thing you could do is go and map the 25 to 50 important fatherhood uh, blogs and platforms and ask to guest blog and then you're siphoning that audience. Now you have to write a good blog because nobody will come over if you stink. Um, and that would be another thing. I'd also scrap up a couple bucks. I would spend 20 to $50 a week instead of buying a, a shake or taking an Uber or going to see Star Wars. You know, take that 20 and 50 bucks and buy Facebook ads against dads that show interest about being a dad. Uh, there's a million things you can do. India? I'm a little angry. I'm excited, that was fun, that was very, that was very like, I've been talking about crushing since 2009. Let's get our shit together, people. That's what that was. Right, from Eric. Eric. Eric wants to know, what makes a company more investable? Millions of active users consuming free content or millions in actual profit? Uh, millions in actual profit. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I haven't done an answer where I didn't expand on it in a long time. I I've picked this moment to do that. <laughs> from Carter. Carter asks, how do you prepare for a big meeting or anything where you're required to have a strong performance? Carter, I prepare for a big meeting uh, by living my life, meaning I am always prepared for a big meeting, thus I never prepare for a big meeting. Meaning, when you're, when you're great at something or very good at something, you don't need any prep time because you're always prepping. Right, and so that's the punchline of me in a professional meeting standpoint. Like, the years of experience, the bravado, the results, the cadence, the, the natural skills, uh, the, the two things that matter, practice and natural talent have been there, so I don't prepare for a big meeting. It's not like I get pumped up. I don't put in like Lil Wayne and be like, all right, we're gonna go get it. Like, there's none of that. There's no like looking in the mirror and be like, okay, we're gonna win this pitch. There's none of that bullshit. I put in the work every day, 365, to, to be ready for that. And I think anybody that's very good at something is always doing that. You know, you don't just wake up and decide you're gonna be good at something. You're always preparing. Um, you know, it's like, it's like, if you're, if you're, if you're preparing in a tactic way, you're unprepared. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That was, you like that, right? That was some deep-ass shit, right? Really good, yeah. yeah, I mean, like, 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 how am I gonna prepare to cook a great meal for these homies right now? The answer is, I'm not. There's no reading a blog post or watching a YouTube video or calling a chef friend. Like, I'm gonna fuck it up. I haven't done anything for 40 years that preps me to cook a good meal to you. That was some high-level shit. That was high-level shit. Boy, I have so much more energy when there's other human beings around. Yeah. <laughs> like literally, I'm like feeling, I'm like, like feeling, like this dude right here, this big man, is giving me energy. <laughs> Samantha, do you have headphones? Samantha, I gotta listen, right? I have headphones. Or do you want to just listen? No, no, I got headphones. Bam! Nice. Right in your face, India. <laughs> I'm very competitive right now. Here, plug this in. What are you doing? What are you guys doing? I'm looking at That, you can't. This is the public space? No. This is public space. This is private space open to the public. Okay. No worries. We'll just send it. All right, guys. You heard the man. We have to listen. Uh, you keep asking questions. I'll keep answering them. Oh. This is so we got shut down. Great to meet you. And, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we <laughs> Thank you so much. Keep, keep doing what you do, man. Thank you. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Take care.
Yeah, that happened. <laughs> I'm surprised when people don't do that. It's like a lot of people are in. Someone was like, oh, I had a meeting right by um, Time Warner and I like saw you there and I was like, oh, people, I guess people are like around. People, just know. people don't want to bother sometimes, like, you know. Oh, yeah, no, I, can't, I can't imagine going up to a famous person. Like, oh, when I see jet players, I get so pumped, but I've never really bothered them. Just tell you to stop doing that? Yes, D Rock.